Welcome to Geneva Presbyterian Church Online Early Worship Service. I'm Pastor Joe Albright, and I want to say a very special word of welcome to any of you who are worshiping as visitors today. We are delighted to have you with us. If you have any prayer request, there is a link right on the front page of our website. We do have a prayer team that meets every week. We'd be glad to be praying for you and any request that you might have. And now at this time, I invite you to center your hearts and your minds on Christ as we prepare to worship. Friends, this is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. saints who from their labors rest with thee by faith before the world confessed thy name O Jesus be forever blessed Our scripture today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By Him you are called into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Today we're celebrating All Saints Day. It's a day when we remember that we are a part of a family of faith that not only stretches all the way around the globe, but also that stretches back through time. Now I think about my grandfather. I think about Dick Fernstrom and Herb Meza and Ray Woody and Roger Kunkel and so many others across the years who were instrumental in my faith and who are no longer with us. And then I think about those who came before them and and those who handed on their faith to them. 
I mean, one generation after the next, over 2,000 years. One of our elders here at Geneva, she shared that growing up, her pastor regularly reminded them that on All Saints Day, we remember not only those who came before us, but we also remember those who will come after us. We remember that this ministry, it didn't begin with us, and it won't end with us. I mean, I'm not the, the first pastor here at Geneva, and I won't be the last. And, but in the time that I have, in the time that you have, we all have a role to play. And I'm reminded that this faith that was, that was handed on to me, it's blessed countless people before me. It's carried them through some really difficult times in life. And now, it's been carefully passed down and entrusted to me and to you. I mean, we are called to be stewards of the gospel. You know, at some point, we all cross that line, don't we, where, where in our faith journey, we go from being the ones who have been receiving to the ones who are giving, the ones who have been fed to the ones who are feeding others, the ones who have been nourished to the ones who are nourishing others, the one who has been brought into the faith or brought up in the faith to the one who builds on what we've been given so that one day it can be handed on to others. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church of God that is in Corinth. To those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. And you can see the, the threads of connection all throughout this letter that, that we don't stand alone in our faith. Now, it is important to remember that at the time when Paul was writing, there were no church buildings. The Greek word ecclesia, which, which we translate as church, literally means those called apart. And here, called apart to be saints. Now, a lot of times we think about, when we think about saint, we think about Mother Teresa or St. Matthew or one of the other greats, but, but in the scriptures, the saints are simply those who have been called by God. And whether we experience that call as a, as a tug on our hearts or a stirring in our souls, or I know some people, they experience it as a, a two by four upside the head. It's like, okay, God, that event, that, 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 that failure or that, that blessing, got my attention. But however you've experienced that call, whether it was subtle or not so subtle, we've all sensed a need to be here, to be a part of something greater. Or we wouldn't be here, would we? Paul, he names this as being called into the fellowship of Jesus Christ. Now later in the same letter, he says that together in some mystical way, we are Christ's body, raised, alive, at work in the world. I mean, in this sense, we're called not just to go to church, but to be the church. What does it mean to be called by God? I mean, being called or, or, or being, being tapped on the shoulder by God, it always kind of reminds me of my, my teenage daughters, just for example. If, if I were to come home one day from work and the house, our house is a total disaster, big mess, and they've had a big time together, and, and I come home and I say, hey, someone needs to clean up this mess. Well, do you think anybody's going to do it? Well, probably not. However, if I direct a little bit of my fatherly attention to one of them or a few of them, if I say, hey, Emily, I need your help. Or, hey, Emily, Noel, Corey, I need your help cleaning this up. Well, I'm probably going to get a better response, right? And so you could think about God tapping you on the shoulder. Kathy, I want you. 
Bob, I want you, Sally, I want you to take your part within this great communion of saints. I want you to show the world what my love looks like. I want you to care for those most in need. So all of this, it kind of makes me reflect on our own ecclesia here, our own gathering of those who have been been called apart as a communion of saints in this time and place. And I think about these past couple of years. I mean, wow. It's, it's, been, it's been pretty tough, hasn't it? I mean, in February of 2020, if you were to have told me that we would have to close the doors of our building and not worship in person for over four months, I never would have believed it. I mean, I never could have imagined almost an entire year without congregational singing indoors. I never could have imagined shifting an enormous amount of time and attention and resources to producing online worship. I could never have imagined the start of a recovery followed by a second crippling delta wave of this virus. I mean, this is all. It's been a powerful reminder of the uncertainty of life. It's been a powerful reminder that there are no promises that the way things are is the way they'll continue to be. And yet, it has also been a reminder, as, God, as Paul writes, that God is faithful. God is faithful. I mean, because in the midst of all of this, our church, you, continued to hold together. All right? You continued to show up for online worship. You continued to give generously. You did not throw in the towel. You did not disappear. In spite of all the uncertainty, in spite of this enormous shift in what we were doing and experiencing, somehow, here we are. I mean, to me, this is a beautiful reminder that the church is way more than a building. It's more than the pastor. It's more than even gathering in person for worship. I mean, this has been a powerful reminder to me that there is far more going on than meets the eye and that we are not in charge. God is. Which is a good thing to remember at a time when there is just so much uncertainty and change in the world around us. You know, many writers, they're framing this time as a liminal time. Liminal coming from the Latin root word limen, meaning threshold. Right? And, and what I mean by that, well, I mean, you could think about twilight as being a liminal time, right? Not, not really day, not really night, you're in between. Or New Year's Day, you're on the cusp of one year, but not quite right out of the, out of the last. Or even All Saints Day, we're, we're in this liminal space between those who came before us and those who will come after us. Susan Beaumont writes that during liminal seasons, we stand on both sides of a threshold. We have one foot rooted firmly in something that is not yet over, whereas the other foot is planted in a thing not yet defined, something not yet quite ready to begin. You know, I think most of us, most of us are aware that not only in, the, in our church, but in the world around us, I mean, things will never go back to being exactly as they were pre-pandemic. And that can be kind of scary. However, we do need to remember that in the Bible, liminal times and spaces are sacred. In fact, the Celtic tradition says that liminal times and places are thin places. You remember that term? You know, a lot of times we talk about a thin place as being a place where we, we sense God's presence, and it might be a mountaintop or out in the ocean. But a liminal time or a threshold time is a time when the veil between heaven and earth is at its thinnest. Right? Where, where the material and the, and the, and the spiritual, they intertwine. It, the, the eternal 
is seeping through the physical. And the presence of God is palpable. I mean, I've certainly, I've certainly felt that as well. I mean, it is clear that something new is emerging, that God is doing a new thing. And, and our session has been, they've been wrestling with this uh, question over the last year. How do we get in on this? And what is our church going to look like 10 years from now? I mean, as a church, we do believe that God has given us some bold dreams for the future. I mean, not the least of which is calling a new associate pastor, which is not, not an assistant pastor, but a, another pastor who will actually help us expand our ministry and mission to the next generation. We also believe that God is calling us into partnership with Living Waters to build relationships with our neighbors in West Augustine and to continue our outreach through our online ministry. And to do that, it's going to take all of us. In fact, in two weeks, we are all going to have the opportunity to make a, a pledge of financial resources to our common worship, ministry, and mission for 2022. Now, what, what are we saying by making that kind of a pledge or estimate? What, what are we saying through our giving? Well, on one level, we're saying, I believe in this community. I believe this is the community where God has led me to live out my faith or, or to grow in my faith. I mean, it's not a perfect community. I mean, I don't know of any that are. It's, it's not a community that, that thinks alike or votes alike it's not a community with a large staff where everything's laid out and prepared just for me. But it is a community where I can make a contribution. And it is a community where God's spirit is clearly at work, where God has been shaping and forming us and sending us out to share his love with a hurting world. You know, at a time when there is so much uncertainty, at a time when when our nation is so divided, polarized, at a time when any kind of real community with any level of political or theological or even age diversity is, is rare, at a time when our world has needed people of faith more than ever to build bridges and to share Christ's love, by giving, we're saying, I believe in this calling and I believe that I have a role to play right here, right now. On this All Saints Day, may you consider again your own part in this communion of saints, those who have come long before you and those who will come long after you. And may you remember that as the Apostle Paul wrote long ago in that first letter to the Corinthians, that in Christ you have been enriched in every way, that he will strengthen you to the end, and that indeed God is faithful. May we respond with all our hearts. May it be so. Amen. I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. The of sin too long I've trod Lord I'm coming home coming home coming
to roam Open wide thine arms of love Lord, I'm coming Every year on this Sunday, we remember the saints who have gone on to be with the Lord. I invite you to bow in prayer as we remember those who from this community of faith here at Geneva died in Christ over the past year. Dave Kukar Sarah Umbarger Judy Hartzell Ken de Raphael, Carol Watkins, John Giarte, Sandy Olson, Sally Thornton, Harry Heigel, Suzanne Davis. Dwayne Wild, John McCormick. Eternal God, today we remember and give thanks for all your children, those who answered when you called, those who walked with you, who served, who loved, 
who proclaimed your good news with their words, their deeds, and their very lives. We give you thanks that having lived this life in faith, they now rest eternally with you. As we celebrate the faithful, may we be sustained by the promise of the resurrection and the promise that while now we see as in a mirror dimly, one day we will see face to face with all the saints of every time and place. Through Jesus Christ, amen. Our offerings go to further the mission and ministry of our church. All that we do, including this online worship, is made possible only by our common giving. If you're able to make an offering, please know that it is much appreciated. You can do so in any one of three ways. There is a link to give right on the front page of our website. If you follow that link, it's very simple, very straightforward. Of course, you can always mail a check into our church post office box or simply drop it by the church office Monday through Friday. Friends, let us give in response to God's love and grace. Generous God, bless and multiply these tithes and offerings so that your ministry and mission through us would touch lives, change hearts, and deepen discipleship. In Christ's name, amen. And now as you go back out into your everyday lives, I pray that you would be the hands and the feet of Christ, that you would be the church, and now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. <laughs>